Good evening. My name is Mark Harris. Uh, welcome to Diversa TV. If you are just tuning in for the first time, welcome. Uh, if you are returning to us, uh, our growing legion of many fans, welcome back. Uh, Diversa TV's mission is to illuminate everyday diversity issues and give the mic and the camera to those who don't always get it. Uh, tonight's guest is no stranger to the mic, but uh, to that end, the mission of the show is basically to show folks that people that they don't may they may or may not necessarily see all the time. So to that end, our schedule. Uh, this is our season six, which re uh, basically corresponds to. Uh, LCC term, so we've been going for almost three years. Uh, we usually start with a Native American perspective as we did on January 14th. Uh, January 21st, we did an Obama show because uh, of the historic nature of, you know, when we basically did a show uh, on his visit to Mac Court and crowd reactions. Uh, January 28th, we did an Anglo perspective. Uh, February 4th, uh, African in America. Uh, Latino show, um, and this week we'll have our special guests, but we'll get into that later. And we do uh, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgendered, youth shows, class, spirituality, and religion. Now, uh, due to uh, some technical difficulties, you'll just have to Google this or look it up. Uh, what you don't see yet is a uh, graphic of Great Zimbabwe, which what Great Zimbabwe was, was begun over a thousand years ago. Uh, it was constructed and expanded for more than 300 years uh, in a local style that emphasized flowing curves. And so it's similar to about 300 other uh, architectural complexes in Zimbabwe, and it's set apart by its size being one of the largest structures south of the Sahara Desert in Africa. In the 1800s, European travelers and English colonizers, uh, stunned by great Zimbabwe's grandeur and workmanship attributed to the architecture to a uh, vanished white civilization that somehow <laughs> you know, created these structures <laughs> and then disappeared without a trace, very right. similar to the notion that the Aryan race swept down from the Khyber Pass and conquered all of India yeah, yeah. and then civilized the black Indians and then <laughs> disappeared again without a trace. <laughs> uh, so Great Zimbabwe, like other sites in Africa, was looted for its African artifacts and strategic minerals. So when the country was named Southern Rhodesia for Cecil Rhodes, who founded the De Beers Mining Company of uh, Rhodes Scholarship fame, it retained its, shall we say, colonialist white supremacist orientation in which many indigenous people rightfully resisted over long years of struggle. And uh, the graphic, which you can't see, but you can imagine, and you'll, uh, even though we don't have any samples of music for you to hear tonight, uh, an umbira is, is often known in English as an African thumb piano, but I think it's much more beyond that. An umbira, uh, Africans have always used music as an integral part of our spiritual and cultural practices to facilitate freedom. <coughs> so, umbira music. Uh, became part, used as part of a liberation struggle. And so tonight's guest, combining the twin forces of tradition and innovation to transfer music made on one instrument of African origin to another, the electric guitar, meaning the guitar was an African invention, the electric guitar was an American innovation based on that African instrument. Our guest helped facilitate a liberation struggle he celebrated in his country, Zimbabwe, in the 80s in a concert that also featured Bob Marley. Uh, Thomas Mapfumo and the Blacks Unlimited are a band from Zimbabwe. This is from his MySpace page, Improvised. Uh, imp influenced by traditional music, traditional African instrument called the Mbira from Zimbabwe, and um, improvised with modern music on modern instruments like electric guitar. Uh, this is a quote, our music speaks for the people. We are influenced by the people who are struggling at home. Their voices have been silenced. Someone has got to talk. Welcome, Thomas. Thank you. So tell me about where you're from. Um, a village south of Harare. What was it like growing up there? Well, uh, 
Well, growing up there, I mean, as a kid, was something else. Because uh, um, when I grew up myself, I grew up in the country, and I was brought up by my grandparents. Mm. Uh, I spent almost about uh, 78 years herding cattle, uh, donkeys, and, and goats. Uh, there in the rural uh, area, I was actually uh, involved in a lot of uh, uh, traditional music. Oh, okay. My own grandparents were into that type of music, a lot drumming and singing, and uh, bira music hmm. was there also. So I grew up there, and uh, <coughs> that's where I actually I got the rest of my experience with the music that I'm playing today. Okay. Because uh, after I actually stayed with my, uh, being brought up by my grandparents, I moved on to, in, I mean, to, uh, to the city where my parents were uh, uh, living. And uh, I joined my own parents who were living in the city. And that was my first time, <coughs> I mean, to listen to radio music. Okay. And. Uh, um, what was on the radio then? Well, well, uh, there was a lot of music on the radio, like uh, music from America, music from South Africa, uh, music from uh, the Congo, and the music from England, music from all over the world. Mm. Yes. Mm. So, well, um, when I went to stay with my parents uh, in the city, this was a different, I mean, environment altogether. I grew up in a country where there was no radio music. Yeah. And when I started listening to radio music, I'm listening to a lot of, I mean, uh, bigger names, like uh, uh, names in rock and roll music. Elvis Presley was one of them. Uh, Otis Redding, uh, and, uh, a lot of other guys who were into soul music. Okay. Also, 50s and 60s. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We listened to a lot of uh, 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 Beatles stuff, mm -hmm. uh, John Lennon and uh, Paul McCartney, the Rolling Stones, and the rest of them. We even uh, listened to a lot of uh, heavy metal stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, other groups like uh, 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 the Chicago, Okay. And uh, big band kind yeah, of like yeah, big jazz, band yeah. and, and a big brass and that's I mean those guys made me love I mean uh, the brass brass music because their brass section was really good and uh, other uh, brass bands like I mean the brass construction uh -huh. was really good and uh, they actually inspired me a lot yeah. so my band also uh, there is a. Uh, uh, a brass section, right? And right. I've always, I mean, uh, loved, I mean, to arrange the brass section myself. So it was actually uh, really exciting in the city. There were a lot of kids, I mean, trying to imitate, I mean, uh, Western styles. I was one of them, and uh, as time went on, I was growing up to be a big boy. And as you know, that country was Rhodesia. Right. And as it, as it was Rhodesia, there, were, there was a lot of segregation amongst the black people and um, uh, 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 black against white. Yes. Uh, well, so segregation between black people, yeah, between yeah, black, different types of black people. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but no, the uh, black people and white people. Okay, black people and white people. And okay. white people, All right. yes. Okay. So, well, uh, um, there used to be uh, 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 some uh, uh, music contest, like okay. rock band contest. Okay. And our band was known as the Springfields, and we were a rock and roll outfit. <laughs> so <laughs> How many pieces? <laughs> we, we were actually five people five in our people. band. Yeah, okay. five people in our band. Yeah. And I was the, uh, the front man singing rock and roll music. Uh, we were there, the rock band contest, and uh, the, the rest of them, the rest of the other bands were bands from South Africa. Okay. These were typical, I mean, white bands. Right. 
uh, as you know, there was a lot of segregation and racism during that time. So, what, in a, in a, a contest that was in then Rhodesia. <laughs> yes. That okay. Was, that so was, you're getting white rock bands yes, from yes, South Africa because the Africa. black rock bands, if yeah. they even exist, yeah, yeah. were not going to be allowed to travel no, no. because of the past system. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Back then. That's right? very true. So you're competing against white bands from white South Africa. White bands from South Africa, and also white bands. In Rhodesia, from and, Rhodesia. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And they would let you white white bands and rock, black rock bands play together. Yeah, they yes, yes, yes. The play, okay. We play together in the same uh, uh, contest. Contest, but yeah. not together. Not together. Your band was all black. Yeah. The Springfield. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. So well, uh, we were on the stage. We were playing a song by the Rolling Stones. So okay. This music was all right. copyright right. music. Right. We're playing this Rolling Stone number uh, song, uh, uh, the, the last time. This could be the last time. Yeah, this, this could be, be the, the last time. time. Right. <laughs> oh, baby, last time. I don't know. And there was this white guy is looking at us. We're playing on this. Shut up, you kefir. Yeah, yes, you, you know. You kefir. Yeah, okay, kefir. right. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what yeah, that yeah, means. Yeah. Yes. So the, there was a guy who was playing in a group, and he was from um, Zambia. Uh, he, I mean, goes by the name Pasmo Kalari. Zambia was already independent. Okay. This guy wouldn't take all this nonsense. This right. guy was shouting, Why you know, he? abusive well, ways at us. So the guy jumped, I mean, the other guy, the Pasmo jumped from the stage. He grabbed this guy by the throat. Mm -hmm. The police had to come in to separate them. Yes. And uh, that alone, you know, got really into my nerves and I started thinking, I said, if these people don't want us to sing in their language, what are we supposed to be anyway? Right. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a rock concert. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, well, they're laughing at us. Uh, we are supposed to, I mean, to, 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 I mean, to, to just enjoy music. Like everyone else, if you are a musician, there's no uh, barrier in music. There's right. no boundary. It's just music. So I started thinking, I said, don't we have something of our own? Mm. And I started thinking of the, uh, the years that I spent in the country. There was a lot of music. My grandparents were into traditional music. And when I listened to the... Uh, I, when I revisited the Mbira music, I found out that the Mbira music was just as good as any other music. The yeah. music was danceable, yeah. and the music had a message also. So I said, why can't I try and be my, I mean, why can't I try to be myself? I'm, I'm not, I'm, I, I can't be Elvis. I cannot be here. I cannot be Frank Sinatra. I cannot be John Lennon. <laughs> I suppose I got to be Thomas Mafumo. I guess yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually started uh, thinking about that, and I said, well, I, I really got to identify with my own people and really have to sing music in my own mother's language. Mm. So when I started writing music in Shona, and uh, as you know, I'm in Shona myself, yes. and uh, uh, that's my tribe. I started writing music in Shona. There was a guy, uh, he was my uncle. He used to play in a group called the, uh, the Capital City Dixies. You know, uh, the, the group used to, they used to paint themselves like uh, those carnival groups that we see in the Caribbean. Yeah. And From Brazil yeah, yeah, all yeah, the yeah, other places yeah, yeah, in the sure, Caribbean. Yeah, yeah, right, so yeah. They, they were, I mean, they were really good. They used to uh, play a lot of, I mean, uh, varieties, um, playing rock and roll and other type of, uh, types of music, like ballads and things like that. So I was listening to this guy, he's my uncle. He had one Shona song that he used to sing, Shungu Zinon Baya. This guy was singing. What does that mean yeah, it, in Shona? Uh, it means uh, uh, he, was, uh, he was actually singing about uh, uh, when he was, uh, when he started, he was a rich man. Okay. And then all of a sudden, 
he lost everything. Uh, it was quite a sad story because I when I, I, I when I listened to, to to this guy singing this song and he was a comedian and he was making people laugh out of this song. I said mm. this song is not a joke. That's right. It has a story to tell. And well, I I never asked him to <laughs> I mean to to, to, to 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 for this song. I just I, I just took it because he was my uncle and I re-recorded the song myself. Well, people came to me and said, oh, this song is really good. Why don't you keep up the good work? Because the direction that you are taking right now is the right direction. The few of them came to me. But to the compose and yeah, sing yeah, in Shona. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they actually, after they encouraged me to do that, I carried on. I even played rumba music by Franco from... Uh, uh, yeah, Franco and yeah, Rochero. Yeah, 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 yeah. From Zaire. Yeah, yeah, from Zaire. Yeah. I thought this guy was really good. Oh, yeah. he's amazing. He was amazing, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> he was just a great artist. I, I loved his music, and today I, I still play his music. Yeah. So, well, we were changing some of Franco's music from uh, Lingala to Shona. Okay. But we, right. we, 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 we didn't understand Lingala. Right. We were yes. just changing, I mean, uh, just putting, I mean, this music our way. Yeah. Uh, um, just taking the melody and then uh, uh, we put our own lyrics without even knowing the meaning of, of what this guy uh, was, what, what Frango was singing about. But anyway, people loved, I mean, rumba music. But at the same time, that wasn't our music. Well, when I started playing Chimrenga music, it, uh, seriously, it was during uh, the liberation struggle. Okay. When uh, the liberation uh, struggle started in, in that country, that's when uh, I started recording uh, Chimrenga music. And, uh, it, it came the very time when the war broke out in, in that country. So let's, let's talk about that for a second. Oh, um, yeah. So there, because I teach ethnic studies, so the Berlin Conference was basically, you know, in Berlin, we're going to, the Europe and America is going to divide up Africa. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. you know, Germans get one part, the English get another, French get another, Italians, et cetera, Oh, yeah, et cetera, that's very true. Right? And they're occupying yeah, they're, know, with troops. Yes. Right? Yeah. So you could think that a liberation struggle would start from the beginning, yes. but then would start then growing at oh, some yeah. point. Oh, yeah. So when you're talking about liberation struggle, the war breaking out, you're talking, what, 70s, mm -hmm. 80s? Yeah, 70s. Okay. So in, in the 70s, we were invited by a, a mining company uh, to form a band. Um, they wanted uh, us to entertain uh, the white guys nah. uh, working at the mine. We used to play. Like at De Beers? Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. play at their clubs and, and things like that. But we were not allowed to mix with the white people. Naturally. We right. just, just, just play their just music. Tired yeah, help. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and stay to, in your place, guys. Where, when you finish, you, you stay behind the stage. You don't, I mean, you don't mix with the, with the audience. Yeah. Uh, well, we went there. Uh, we were thinking of, uh, I mean, uh, starting our. Uh, uh, own type of music, uh, but we were trying to imitate a group called Osibisa. You okay. remember Osibisa? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, w I would even think that o Osibisa is yeah. getting radio play oh, yeah, in Africa. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, so you listen, y'all look up Osibisa, okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, now this is really old school. <laughs> so he said, oh, well, Osibisa was sound really good and uh, the, the Afro, their Afro rock was really good. I said, why can't we do like these guys? If we can play uh, the same stuff they are playing, I think we'll be taking the right direction. So we tried that. But you know, it it, it, it didn't. I mean, uh, it, it it didn't get uh, down well with the uh, with the people. Yeah, there was only. Why one, do you think? Yeah, well, 
Why do you think that was? Because that wasn't their music. Right. Okay. Yes. Sure. That wasn't sure. their music. So we tried, you know, to uh, search for the right, I mean, stuff. Uh, we came, I came up with a song uh, from the rural areas. Uh, it was about uh, the liberation struggle. Okay. okay. And, Honestly, when we released this, uh, 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 it was a, a, a 45 7 single. Mm. The, um, we released this music, Every, everybody went for it. Wow. They said this was the right stuff for them. Okay. So, so what was the instrumentation then? There, there, were, there was no mbira. It was only uh, comprised of guitars okay. and drums okay. and the brass section. Okay and uh, vocals, right. and that was all. Okay. Mm. So uh, when we uh, recorded this type of music, everybody liked it. And th that made me realize that we had actually taken the wrong direction. But this time, we had actually uh, found uh, our own identity. Yeah. Right. Yes. And right. uh, from that day, I started you know, uh, bringing in songs from the rural areas, and some of them I was writing them. Uh, well, uh, every song that I wrote or that I recorded became an instant hit mm. because everybody was trying uh, to to be with, with their people, and they are tr trying to uh, identify themselves with. Uh, I mean, their own culture. Yeah, whatever their culture yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. we're not Rhodesians. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We're not Rolling Stones. No, we're no, not OCBs. No, uh, okay, no, we, we are, are whoever we are. We are. Right, right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We, so that's it. actually, I got so popular with the, uh, the African people. The white government was very suspicious. <laughs> about my popularity, yes. and they started investigating why a black boy was so popular. Mm. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, amongst his own people. Imagine that. Then somebody sold out and told them the exact st story that I was actually uh, my music was uh, uh, was actually against. I mean, the the, the system. Right. So well, <laughs> because basically you are singing, you know, in Shona. Yes, right? I was singing Shona. So all they're going to react to, even if you're getting radio play, is the music yes, itself, yeah, and it's going to be infectious and it's going to be dancing. That's very, very true. And that's all they're going to think about oh, oh yeah, until oh yeah. somebody does a translation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody did some translation, and well, they were. Uh, uh, very upset about my music. Hmm. They decided to put me away. I was uh, uh, arrested. It was on a Friday. I actually, I, 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 I had just come from my rehearsals with a band with uh, 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 some rehearsals that afternoon. And when I got back home, my wife was there and she gave me a note which was left by the uh, by the police, they said I should actually uh, turn yourself in. Yeah, turn, turn myself in at the police station the next morning. So well, um, the next morning we drove. I had a very small car, a Morris Minor. We, <laughs> <laughs> we drove to the police station and we were met by the gate by this. Uh, 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 a black guy, he was a, a police officer, but he was a, a, a CID. Okay. Uh, so he actually said, oh, so you came? I said, yes. I said, okay, we, we were waiting for you. So uh, I went into the office and he gave me papers. He said, uh, I want you to sign these papers. I said, what are these papers for? He just said, well, okay, it's the work of the police, just sign the papers. I said, well, I signed the papers. And he said, well, after signing, he said, look, now you are under arrest because right now you are not going back home. We are going to lock you up in the cells. 
I said, just like that. Today is Friday, and I had a show at um, uh, uh, another bigger club in the, in the, uh, in the area. They, well, I was locked up on a Friday. Friday was day, Saturday, Sunday, the Monday, Tuesday, the, another guy, another plane, uh, closed policeman came, he picked me up, he took me straight to the uh, main prison, the detention center. This is in then Salisbury. Yes, it's yeah. in Salisbury. Yeah. I was taken there and uh, I still remember my cell number was number seven. Mm. That, that's where they, uh, they locked me in. I was there. I stayed there every morning. Uh, they unlocked the door, got out, uh, stayed by the, by the sun. This guy would come. He was the superintendent of the, of the prison. Said, oh, you are a musician, but what are you doing here? I said, I don't know. They just brought me here. So they kept sending in a lot of, I mean, plain clothes policemen to ask me questions about my music. I said, look, my music has nothing to do, I mean, uh, with politics. Yeah. This is the music of my people, and it is their culture. What were you saying that they thought was so controversial? I mean, you, they made you sign a paper, uh -huh. but didn't explain to you what it was. Yeah, they, they never explained uh, mean, to me what it was. Okay. Yeah, so I actually, I kept telling them, the music uh, has nothing to do with politics. This is my people's music, and it is their culture. They kept telling me a lot of things. Yeah, your music is supporting the terrorists and things like that. I said, I don't know nothing about that. My music is just music, like any other music. Yeah. I stayed there for three months, and um, they decided to let me go, but on condition that I should do something for them, they, because there was uh, an internal settlement that was going on between a, a Bishop Musorewa mm. and uh, uh, the Rev Ndamanig Sitole, and uh, there's, oh, there was uh, Chief Chirau, Wow, I and, recognize uh, these names. And, and there's <laughs> there was Chief Dewey. It is uh, all uh, people who were brought in by Ian Smith himself. Yes, he right. was trying to create a government of national unity with these other guys, yeah. but uh, leaving out the 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 the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the the boys who were, I mean, uh, fighting from the bush. Yes. So th actually, this this didn't work because. <clears throat> When surprise, they, surprise. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, work. You know, they said, well, we are, uh, I mean, we are freeing you, but we want you to go and play at Bishop Musorewa's rally, which what? was uh, to play music at Bishop Musorewa's rally. I said, well. Wait a minute. They just jailed you, and yes. they want you to play at somebody's rally the, for the coalition government? Yeah, for the coalition government, to make it look like I was supporting the coalition government. Well, I said to myself, no problem. I will go and play well, with my band. So they let me out, and when I got home, I tried to get hold of the band members. I told them that, look, guys, this is the situation we are in. We support the struggle, but at the same time, they are forcing us to go and play this rally. Yeah. But we don't have, the other thing that you should know is that we are just musicians. We are not even armed, and uh, we cannot say no. We have to go and play at this rally. And the, wep the only weapon that we had was our music, mm -hmm. because nothing had changed. The music was still revolutionary, right. and uh, we had nothing new to suit. I mean, their situation. There was still segregation. Yeah, there yeah, was still yeah. all the other yeah, conditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we went there. We played our revolutionary music. Uh, people were asking questions: Why are you guys still singing this type of music when the country is about to attain its independence? We said, 
I said, I, I, we, we didn't have time to actually compose the music to suit this situation. And just, just took it like that. We were lucky. So, but the next morning, the, on the front page of the national paper, there was a picture of me standing side by side with Bishop Mosorewa to make it look like I was supporting, I mean, uh, the internal settlement. Mm -hmm. And they were using my music, yes. you know. So I said, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> they, this, they were trying to confuse people. Right. Uh, but some people uh, I never believed them, but some people almost believed them. Yeah. Well, I said, well, <clears throat> People were saying a lot of things about the band, uh, that the band had sold out by playing at this rally. Uh, we never said anything. We just said, well, guys, we don't have to go to the paper or to say anything. We, we, we keep, we'll keep doing the same thing that we have been doing. The music hasn't changed, and the message hasn't changed. So we kept on, I mean, recording a lot of revolutionary music. People now realize that uh, actually we hadn't changed. And they were trying to uh, to victimize us by uh, 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 labeling us like I mean we were sellouts, but we were not like that. We yeah. stood by the by by the struggle. Right. And I mean, if you didn't yeah. change your tune, you didn't change your lyrics. They jailed you. Yes. So they probably realized that killing you is not really going. You've already changed a visibility and a popularity that killing you is a bad move. Oh yeah. Oh, that yeah. makes you a martyr. Yeah, that's true. Right. That's very true. Now, what kind of um, terrorists were they thinking that you were in league with? Because I have to tell you, mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine. Uh huh who's now an ancestor, but yeah. he used to be head of the math department, uh -huh. was Shona. Okay. Okay? Derek yeah. Mpinga. Okay, 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 okay. All right. So Derek talked about, so, I mean, Derek was a heavy cat. Yeah. I mean, yeah. really. <laughs> yes. you know, I mean, he said so, you know, he used to have this little thing of Mickey Mouse because he said, okay, my power <laughs> animal's a mouse. Okay. Right? So, you, you know, you recognize him, right? Yeah. Yeah. So... He said, okay, we were doing the, okay, we were blowing up power stations. Mm -hmm. All right, so he had dual degrees in nuclear physics oh, and yeah. mathematics. Oh, yeah. oh, and yeah. was the head of the math department oh, here. Oh, yeah, okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, he confided, you know, I'm sharing this because, you know, he's crossed over. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, and yeah. it is the past, but he says, look, you know, we didn't kill anybody in our actions, but we blew up power stations. Oh, yeah. And oh. the reason we blew up power stations is because where, you know, who, where is electricity going? Yeah, It's sure. not hurting our people. No, 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 no. <laughs> You know, and in the bush, I mean, you didn't mention <laughs> yeah, this, no. right? Yeah. But out in the country, you know, there's no radio yeah, because, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's no electricity. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, you have battery-operated radios, oh, yeah. maybe, but, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. you yeah, know, so radio is going to be a, a city thing. <laughs> Right? Yeah, yeah, no. So, you know, by Derek doing <coughs> these, you know, operations, and if, he, if he's just one of the actual terrorists blowing up stuff, mm -hmm. you know, to prove a point, like, hey, you need to, you know, equalize this for everybody, <coughs> et cetera, et cetera. That's true. You know? That's very so true. you weren't allied with those folks. Oh, but yeah. they said because, you know, they got a translation of your music. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's fomenting discontent. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's true. So well, um, when uh, uh, when the, they actually uh, declared a, a call for a ceasefire, mm. uh, well, we were all very very happy because a lot of our people perished in this war. Yes, a lot of them ran away from the rural areas to come and stay in the city, like I mean, squatters. Um, life was not good for everybody. Yeah. So we thought a ceasefire was good for every one of us. And they were all called to the, I mean, uh, to, to, to the Lancaster House by the British government. Hmm. The, 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 those who were involved with the internal settlement and those who were still fighting, I mean, from the bush. So Ngomo, Mugabe were the uh, leaders of uh, uh, the guerrilla okay. movements. Right. Gomo was the leader of uh, Zandla, I know, of Zipra. 
Okay. And uh, uh, Mugabe was the leader of uh, uh, Zanla. Okay. So uh, these guys, they actually, uh, they were fighting together from the bush, and they called themselves the Patriotic Front. Okay. And when they went to, they were invited to the Lancaster House. Smith, Ian Smith was there, the f uh, former uh, uh, Rhodesian Prime Minister. Uh, Musorewa was there, Chirau, Ndiweni, and uh, the Dabanigi Sitore, uh, Mugabe, Nkomo. They all went to the Lancaster House. They, uh, they came to a conclusion that uh, an election should be held, and whoever wins was going to take over the country or the government. So, uh, <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> better watch my cards here. <laughs> so, well, as you know, these guys were known as, uh, I mean, the guys fighting from the bush, they, they, they were known as the Patriotic Front. Yes, right. But uh, when it came to uh, the election, they decided to go separate ways. Yes, I bet. Yes, but it was because of Mugabe. Okay. He, he didn't want, I mean, he, he, to be involved with uh, his uh, uh, co-partner, what is uh, Joshua Nkomo. Mm -hmm. he, he, because he, he knew very well that uh, the Shona people were the majority right. of uh, um, the... Mugabe is uh, not yeah, Shona? Yeah, 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 he's Shona. He is Shona. Yeah, he's okay. Shona. Okay. So he decided to, I mean, to, to go his separate way because okay. he knew he had a lot of support. Okay. Because the Shonas are the majority of the okay. Zimbabwe. All right. So, well, <clears throat> when the election uh, came and uh, people voted, Mugabe and his uh, uh, ZANU PF uh, party, they won the election. Uh, it was a landslide because they, well, the Shona people are just, uh, there are too many. He won the election, he won the majority, uh, <coughs> uh, the majority of the uh, uh, parliamentary, I mean, seats. They, he formed a government. He was the prime minister, the first prime minister of Zimbabwe. And then uh, I think after, or was it after some time, they, then he became the president. Well, <clears throat> after that, the other group, uh, that's uh, Zapu, led by Joshua Ngomo. They actually, they were left out of this government. Yes. And they didn't like that. They decided to go back into the bush, come back fighting. They formed. You replaced Ian, yeah, Ian yeah, Smith yeah, with yeah, Mugabe. Yeah, you know, yeah, okay, yeah, we're yeah. still at war. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, well, there was, a, I mean, like a civil war in that country. Yeah. And a lot of uh, people from uh, Ngomo's uh, province from Bulawayo were killed by Mugabe's uh, uh, army. Mm. A lot of them died, and Ngomo was actually invited to actually to see how many of his people uh, were dead, and they were put in a uh, like a like a uh, what do you call the compound? It, it was a train, train? Uh, okay. uh, you know, uh, full train of, car, box yeah, car, yeah, 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 full of bodies, dead mm. bodies. And when Joshua Ngobo saw this, he cried. He said, are we supposed to be killing one another just because of, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, right. because somebody wants to rule? Right. He, he said, well, <clears throat> I want to do, he said to Mugabe, I'll do uh, wh whatever you want me to do because we cannot go on, uh, I mean, killing our people. Yeah. He decided to join Mugabe, to yeah. join uh, Mugabe's government, and he, he, he said, well, I'd rather become the vice president. I don't, I don't care, as long as there is going to be no more killing. Yeah. So he joined uh, Mugabe's government, Ngomo became the vice president. There were two vice presidents. Hmm. So 
uh, there was uh, what they, they called unity between Zapu and Zanu, but they left the other minority parties out. Yeah, out. Yeah. So what the, what becomes the role of your music? Because, I mean, you're out now. Yeah, right? that's right. And you're still playing. Yeah, I'm still playing. So where Ian Smith has now, you know, jailed you, then freed you, then tried to use you as a symbol, yeah, you're yeah. still doing music. Yeah, that's now. right, that's right. And so even if it's revolutionary, you know, even with this transition to power where we're killing each other and, you know, forming governments now... <laughs> What what were you doing musically then? What was your music? What was your message to the people in your music at this point? Well, uh, the message actually hadn't changed. Okay. I was playing. I was. I mean, actually, uh, still uh, sending the same messages. Okay. I mean, to the to the people, like uh, what I did during the struggle. Yeah. So, what would those messages be? Like, if you take a song. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. And this is the name of the song. This yeah. is what it means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, like. Uh, I heard a song, uh, Corruption, ah. the, the, the <laughs> okay. one that I wrote okay. after okay. after noticing that there was corruption within the government. Mm. And uh, I said to myself, well, I have to write a song yeah. about corruption. Yeah. And I wrote this song, Corruption. Some people in the government, they liked the song. Some people didn't like it. Okay because they were corrupt. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. The ones who like it, yeah, like, yeah, you, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. fact that you were yeah. calling it like it is. Yeah, and yeah, You're yeah. Thomas Mafumo, oh, yeah, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, oh, as they oh, say, yeah. the Lion yeah. of Zimbabwe, oh, yeah. that's so true. That's if true. he says it, you know. Right, that's true. Yeah. So, well, um, like during the struggle, I did the same thing. I started singing against the uh, uh, the government itself because I actually had seen a lot of uh, corruption within the government, and uh, 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 I mean the situation itself was actually uh, going down. There was nothing like uh, 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 improvement in our country. Yeah, yes. like we were expecting. Yeah, like yeah. we had expected. Yeah. And uh, uh, everybody was, I mean, everybody thought was uh, everything was going to be rosy. Yes, right. But uh, it wasn't to be. I mean, Derek yeah, talked yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. The things were, were, were getting worse. Or some people were losing their jobs, mm. and some didn't have accommodation. Yeah. And yet, when these people came into power, they were promising people a lot of things, like uh, free accommodation, uh, free medical aid, uh, uh, free education. And this, this, this didn't come about. Right. There was nothing of, of the sort. People were paying for uh, uh, their children's education up to their neck. Yes. So uh, there was nothing good for our people. Yeah. And then, yeah, well, things started going down terribly. And you know where we are today. Yes. And this man, uh, he, when he came from war, he wasn't thinking of... Uh, uh, actually, like what Mandela did, Mandela right. came in. Right. He just he was just there for five years, right. and he said, "No, enough is enough. I have to leave and give it to someone." He gave it to Mbeki. Mugabe was still there. Yeah. He didn't want no opposition. He wanted to create a one-party steady, and our people, I mean, don't like that. You know, it's one thing to create a one-party state if people are getting fed, oh, yeah. if people are getting jobs. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, it's yeah. like, okay, if you're going to take, you know, the land of white farmers, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. then replace it with black farmers, mm -hmm. not just your friends who want land and don't know how to grow anything. You see? <laughs> you, know, you know, only replace people that are not working with people who are going to work. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's kind of basic. Oh, yeah, right? oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, see, what happened is that uh, uh, Mugabe uh, is a, a very arrogant man. Yeah. He doesn't uh, think of, uh, of his own people. He thinks of himself. Yeah. He wants, he really he desperate, desperately wants 
to be uh, in power. Well, that, I don't know what the appropriate phrase is in Shona, but you know the phrase in English, "power corrupts." Yeah, power corrupts. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's the right way to use. You know, I mean, because yes, I, yeah. I think you know, what, you know, I looked at, looked on my mach my computer here, you know, for some of the tunes that I have in yeah, iTunes yeah, of yours, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So you know, Chimurenga rebel, oh, right? Yeah. So what oh, does Chimurenga mean? Chimurenga means uh, struggle. Struggle. Yes. Okay. Struggle. So we decided to name the music Chimurenga because the music was born out of, I mean, the struggle. Yeah. Yes. And that's why we decided to name the music Chimurenga. Because the uh, people who first uh, fought in the first Chimurenga were the, our ancestors, like uh, uh, the, uh, the medium spirit Mbuyane Handa, okay. Okay. Uh, Sekuru Kagubi. They fought against the white settlers, mm. and they were all hanged. And that those were the first people to fight in the first Chimurenga war. Okay. Yes. In so, the 19th century. Yes, yeah. in the 19th century. Yeah. And so, uh, well, that's our story. And uh, uh, today, we have the MDC, uh, led by Morgan Changirai. Okay. Right. They beat him up. He did a lot of bad things against him, but I, 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 I actually I salute him because he has never wavered. He just stood against Mugabe and said, I will actually fight against you until to the end. Yeah. And that's what he is doing. Yeah. Today, they have... Uh, 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 they so now he's yeah. prime minister. Yeah, he's the, he's so the prime minister now. Yeah. But we are actually... Uh, watch your back. Yeah, brother. watch your back, watch your back. <laughs> you, you better do that. <laughs> he has to watch his back. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I like him for what he did, but at the same time he has to be very careful. Yeah. Was these people, you don't trust people like that. Right. Well, I mean, you yeah. haven't been back, have you? Yeah, I haven't been back since uh, 2004. Okay. Yes. Right. I've been living here and uh, playing music all over the world, uh, using, I mean, uh, Eugene is the best coming back here. Why here? I mean, because, you know, you travel all over the world. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. as we were walking into the building, I was telling you, okay, this is a state that basically banned black people from coming to, uh, yeah. you know. And so, you know, I mean, people like you here, you know, I've seen, I've been to your shows, so, um, and you, by the way, uh, yeah. you know, this will air, you know, you know, the night that you're playing at the Wow Hall, uh, yeah, you know, re-air again, but... You know, yeah, so it's always a good time. So yeah, sure. Thomas Mafumo at the Wow Hall, February 20th. You know, yeah, okay. Check it out. But, yeah, why here? Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was um, a, a suitable place for my children to okay. go to school. Okay. Because I have uh, two of my daughters. who The other one, uh, she's doing uh, accounts at the University of uh, Oregon. Okay. Good. And she's just finishing this year. She's doing very well. She's Good. very bright. And I got a young girl. She's at the middle school. She's playing. Uh, she's uh, doing well at school. And she's also into music, playing the piano. And also mm -hmm. at school, she plays the trumpet. Okay. She's into gymnastics. They're doing very well. It seems this is a quiet place for them. Yes. I mean, it's <laughs> nothing Compared very, to uh, a lot yeah, of yeah, places. Yeah, yeah, yes. to, to uh, bigger cities. Right. In, this, um, in this small uh, city, they will concentrate with their work yeah. uh, peacefully. Without, without distractions. Uh, yeah, we, you know. <laughs> uh. What does uh, Chemetungure? Chemetungure. Ch Chemetungure. Yeah, it's, it's a title of. Uh, it's a, this is an old tune. It's a. It's a traditional tune. Chemetungure is. It's a name of a guy, who used to work at a farm, and uh, uh, he used uh, to actually uh, to drive a, a a cart being drawn by uh, donkeys. Mm. So every time he used to go around uh, with these donkeys uh, uh, drawing the cut, he would say, these are my donkeys. And yet those donkeys didn't I mean, belong to him. They belonged to, <laughs> to a white guy. Right, right. <laughs> so, 
So they, people used to sing about this guy, Shem Tengue, Virengoro. So it was just, a, it's a, it's a uh, actually, it's a traditional song. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, because it's on your thing. Oh, yeah. If I didn't do me, had, yeah. you know, oh, had yeah. it on their oh, thing oh, and on oh, Bira. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah I was wondering. Right. Okay. That's right. Yeah, Shona Greatest Shows. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. So what about uh, Mahungetunge? <laughs> Manungetunge. Yeah, thank you. Manungetunge. It's the pains. Okay. When you feel uh, you, uh, pains within your stomach, Stomach is aching, you're having problems. So those that's what we call manunge tunge. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So when you transferred or translated Mbira music to electric guitar, what changed in the spirit of the music? Anything? Yeah, well, <clears throat> at first, as you know, uh, the Mbira instrument itself was not allowed to, uh, uh, to be recorded on uh, the music to be played on radios. This oh, is, uh, from the white por perspective no, or from no, no, the African from perspective? No, Af no, African perspective. Okay. Yes. All right. Because this, they considered the music uh, very uh, spiritual. Right. And, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. They didn't want anybody uh, to mess around with that type yeah, of music. About that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. But anyway, I am uh, an African and I'm one of them and I decided to bring this instrument. I thought the instrument was really wonderful. It, it sounded uh, really uh, beautiful when you actually uh, you, you, you play together with guitars and other modern instruments. Uh, we, when we did that, we incorporated it. And we we uh, played the music together with the guys who uh, play the thumb piano. Mm -hmm sounded really good. I said, why can't we bring these guys in? They, they're just musicians like right. us. So right. this is how they, we brought in the Mbira music, I mean, Mbira instrument. Yeah, that. and I've seen in your live shows when you have two, two Mbira players, yes. either with the resonator and oh, with a little bottle cap oh, mics oh, on. Oh, yeah, the, oh, know, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Right? that's right. And uh, right, so w with bass, guitar, yes, yes, know, yes. horn section, yes, whole and, thing, and, uh, yeah, and everything, yeah. yeah. Sure. So, um, okay. So let's see, why the name uh, Blacks Unlimited? What's the significance of that? Well, Blacks Unlimited, it means uh, uh, the black people are very friendly. They are very unlimited, you know? They welcome anyone who is, uh, I mean, who is a friend. Yeah. 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 So we are very, very unlimited. Yeah. Yes, yes. So when you... Um, so bringing that message to America when you, for example, do songs here to an English-speaking audience and you're still singing in Shona, and there are some sing songs that I've heard you do in English, like Big in America, mm, That's right? Big in America, yeah. um, Why the choice to do, you know, what, when do you decide to do English and then Shona, and do you ever mix the languages together? Yeah, yeah, well, um, I've been doing that, you know, uh, since. I have some other uh, couple of tunes that I have written in English. Mm. And uh, uh, right now we have a CD uh, uh, entitled uh, Exile, okay. because we are living in exile. Right, and essentially. We have managed um, actually to write a few uh, songs in English. Mm. They really, I mean, sound really good, and this CD I'm sure it's gonna be a, a big. Uh, it's gonna be very big because it has a variety of music. Did you record it here, at Gangho? Yeah, we, we it, it yeah. Gangho and, yeah. and, and uh, uh, Sprite City. Uh, uh, Sprite City. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Sprite City Studios. And then we are looking forward uh, to put out this music as soon as possible because we are almost finished. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Okay. So. Exile? Yeah, exile, yes. All right. Um, let's see. What would you like people to know in terms of the struggle in Zimbabwe and how they can be of assistance? What can they do to help? Well, right now, uh, Zimbabwe is, uh, a, a lot of Zimbabweans are suffering from cholera. Yeah, right. And uh, we actually, we spoke to all the people uh, from the Met, uh, First Methodist Church, 
Mm -hmm. that I attend that church myself, though I'm from an African church, but here, I, that's the church I go to, because there are not many African ch churches here. Mm -hmm. So um, we, uh, I mean, I talked to the pastor, and uh, she said, well, we're going to arrange a meeting with them. We're trying to ask them for help if they could send maybe some medication to Zimbabwe. And also, I've been thinking, I've been to South Africa just a, uh, a few days ago. Um, I actually met some South African musicians like uh, uh, Muzak Mbuli, okay. the uh, people's poet, and, uh, Yvonne Chaka Chaka, one of them, and I would like to speak to Johnny Clegg, and From also, yeah, yeah, and, uh, and uh, also uh, uh, brother Yu Masekela. Yes, right. And uh, we were trying, we were also looking, uh, oh, I mean, uh, on uh, the American uh, musical scene, would like to maybe to get one. Uh, uh, African American band to to, uh, to 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 come and play with us in South Africa. We are trying to raise funds for the people of Zimbabwe, okay. so that uh, <coughs> maybe uh, uh, they can use this money to help those people, like I mean, buying medication yeah. for those who are suffering, and they can, could use the other funds just you know to help the poor people there. All right, mm -hmm. I want to thank you for coming. Uh, it's been really great. Thank you very much. Uh, so if you like what you've seen, uh, tell a friend about this show. You can email us at liveclass at lanecc.edu. This has been Diversity TV. Go well, stay well. <laughs>